Hi, this is a quick review to the join distribution functions to the marginal functions and independent variables. If you are given the join distribution function for the two random variables, it appears we can find the distribution functions for the single variables. The distribution function for the single random variable, which is obtained from the join distribution function, is called the marginal distribution function. We, can we are going to consider the marginal distribution functions in the discrete case, in, in a continuous case, and also we're going to talk about the independent variables. At the end of the review, we're going to solve some problems. So in order to find the marginal distribution functions in the discrete case, it appears we just need to use the summation. Uh, so if you are given the joint distribution function p, x, y, we need to sum this over with respect to the y in order to find the joint mass function of the x. For example, if you are given the table for the x and y in this case, like this one, if I would like to find the marginal function for the x, I need to find the summation of the values with respect to the y. For example, uh, I would like to find the marginal function of the x. What kind of values it should take? It can take the values. One, two, three, four, five, six. So what is the probability that x takes the one independently on the y? It is going to be equal to the one over six because I'm going to sum everything on the y. So I can find this by summing the y for the x is equal to the two, three, and so on. If I would like to find the marginal distribution function for the y, I have to sum everything with respect to the x. Probability that uh, y is equal to the marginal probability p y is equal to the one is equal to the sum of all of the joint mass functions for all of the values of the x. Basically, we need to sum the first column in order to find the marginal function, the value of the marginal function for the y when y is equal to the one. When y is equal to the t, we just need to sum uh, over the second column and so on. So the marginal distribution function for the y is, going to, is given in the last row. In the continuous case, we're going to use the same idea in order to find the marginal function for the x. We need to integrate our density function with respect to the y because we're going to get rid of the y. And in order to find the marginal density function of the y, we just need to integrate our density function, the join density function with respect to the x. The two random variables are called independent if we can split the join distribution function as the multiplication of the marginal functions. In a continuous case, if we multiply the marginal density function of the x to the marginal density function of the y, and it is equal to the join distribution function, density function, then the t variables are called independent. In a discrete case, we need to find the values for the marginal distributions for the x and y, and their multiplication for all possible values of the x and y should be equal to the um, values of the joint mass function. Only, so if all of the values, all corresponding values are equal, then the t variables are called independent. Let's, let's talk about some examples. So the t safety inspector inspect the new building and assign the safety score from one to the four. The following table is the joint probability mass function for the first inspector x and the second inspector y. So what does it mean, this table? So one and one, it means that the uh, probability that the first inspector puts a grade one and the second inspector also puts the score one is equal to the 0 0.099, 9%, basically. So let's find the joint distribution functions for the first instructor and the second instructor. So I would like to know what is the probability that the first instructor puts the score one independently on the score of the second instructor. In order to do this, so this is the values of the x, I need to find the probability of the uh, probability mass function of the y. Marginal probability of the y when y is equal to the 1 is equal to 14, 0 0.14. So I need to sum the second row, it's going to be a 2, 15, 3, 1, it's going to be 0 0.21. The sum here is going to be 0 0.3, and the sum in the last is going to be uh, 0 0.35, 0 0.35.
the summation, please note, it is equal to the 1, right? 14 plus 21 plus 3 plus 35 is equal to the 100. So the marginal distribution function for the x is going to be, what is the probability that x is equal to the 1? It's going to be all joined distributions for all the values of the y. So it's going to be equal to the 10, 12, 0 0.12. So the summation of the second column is going to be 0 0.20. Summation of the third column is going to be 0 0.3. Summation of the last column is going to be 0 0.38. Please note that the summation here and summation here, all in all of the cases, is going to give me 1. So this is the marginal distribution function of the y. This is the marginal distribution function of the x. So if I would like to know whether these two random variables are um, independent, I just need to find this value. So for example, if x is equal to the 1, y is equal to the 1, should be equal to the px is from 1 and py from 1. So let's check this. p of x1, y1 is equal to the 0 0.09, and I can find this from here, right? So what is the p of y is equal to the 1? It is equal to the 0 0.14. P of, uh, sorry, 0 0.14. P of X is equal to the 1 is equal to the 0 0.12. So their multiplication is not equal, right? It means that this T random variables are dependent. Um, in a continuous case, if you're given the density function like this, if I would like to find the marginal distribution of a function of the y, I need to get rid of the x. So, our random, so the density function should only depend on the y. It means that we need to integrate this function with respect to the x in a whole range of the domain of the x. So let's integrate this. 1 over 125, 3 minus so x with respect to the y, we have to integrate this with respect to the x from minus t until 3. It's going to be 1 over 125, 3x minus x squared, multiplied to the y from minus t until 3. If I substitute the 3, it's going to be 9 minus uh, 9, right? It's equal to the zero. If I substitute the minus t, it's going to be minus six minus four, which is going to be equal to the minus 10. So the answer is going to be equal to 10 over 125 multiplied to the y. So this is our density, the marginal density function of the y. 10 over, um, so we can divide this to the five, it's going to be, 2 over 25y, 2y over 25. So let's find the marginal distribution function of the x. In this case, we need to double integrate the joint distribution function, uh, sorry, one-time integration of the joint distribution function with respect to the y. So if I would like to find a function which is going to only depend on the x, we just need to get rid of the y. So it's going to be 1 over 125, 3 minus x, y, Integration with respect to the y from 4 to the 6. In this case, it's going to be 1 over 125, 3 minus x, y squared over t. We need to put the value 6 and 4. If I substitute the 6, it's going to be 36 over t minus 16 over t, which is going to be 20 over t or 10 simply, right? So the answer is going to be equal to. 10 over 125, 3 minus x, right? So this is going to be equal to, again, 2 over 25, 3 minus x. So this is the marginal density function of the x. So all these two variables, x and y, are independent. So in order to check this again, we have to do this, fx, y should be equal to the fx multiplied to the fy. So do you remember what was the fx? It was 2 over 25 multiplied to the 3 minus x. And fy was equal to the 2 over 25 multiplied to the y, right? If I multiply them, it is going to be equal to 4 multiplied to the 625 multiplied to the 3 minus x multiplied to the y, right? 
is it equal to this value? I think no. So it means that these two random variables are dependent again, in this case as well. 